Hey everyone, Gary Simon of course, Cetro. Today we are going to integrate Chart.js within Angular 5 and we're also going to take a step further by creating a service from which we will access an API to get and chart that data. All right, so what we're gonna do is uh, switch over here. I'm gonna get my console out if I can find the damn thing. There we go. And what we're gonna do first is, as always, I know this is annoying, um, make sure that you have Node.js and NPM installed. I'm going to assume, assume that you already have that, but uh, if you're not sure, then just type in node-v, npm-v, and there you go. If it goes unrecognized, simply go to node.js.org, download the appropriate installer. And also, we're going to use the Angular command line interface tool, which will... I allow us to quickly and easily get started with an Angular application. All right. Sorry, I was looking at my phone and I'm like trying to talk at the same time. All right. So to do that, make sure you install it first and assuming it's installed, ng new. Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it. We're going to name this charts. And then also afterwards, because we always do this as two different steps, we're going to make it just one line. We're going to CD into the charts directory after it's created. All right, so now we are here in our charts folder. We're also going to use the Angular CLI to generate a service, and you don't necessarily have to do this. You could do it all in the component if you know, for instance, if you're only ever going to have one component, but to make it reusable and to access the API anywhere, we're going to generate a service. So generate service, and we'll call it weather. All right. So after this, we can also install our chart.js package. So we're going to use npm install chart.js and then save it as a dependency in our package JSON file. All right, and then finally we'll run ng serve and that will create, it'll package it up and allow us to access the project, of course, at localhost 4200 right there. I'll copy that and we'll get it up here and <laughs> okay, that didn't work. All right, there we go. Now our Angular app is up and running and ready to go. All right, so I should have ran this command were first, but uh, let me just um, get out a new console here. I'm using Commander. All right, and CD charts, and just code in a period, and that will open up Visual Studio Code for us, which is free. It's one I use, very popular, made in Electron. Okay. So uh, now the next step will involve working in that service file that we created. So we're going to go to source app and weather.service. Okay, so let me make this a little bit bigger. I want to make sure everybody can see this. Control B, we'll get rid of that sidebar. And there's a few things that we have to do. So we're going to import just a couple things initially. And uh, also, if I paste some code, most of it I'm not going to paste. I will type it and explain everything I'm going to go. But when it, come to imp when it comes to imports, I'm just going to paste it. I, there's always a written version of my tutorials, usually like 95% of the time if there's one on YouTube. So just look in the very first line of the description here on YouTube and you can find the written version and you can copy and paste the same code. All right. So right here we have, uh, we're importing the HTTP client, HTTP headers. I, for this one, we don't actually need it. I, but if you're working with a different API, you may need it. So just include it anyhow. Um, and then also the map operator and you'll see how that's used. So next we have in our constructor, we have to create an instance of our HTTP client. So private HTTP, HTTP client. And then also in here, we're going to create a method. So we're going to be using uh, something called openweathermap.org. Let me just open that up for you real quickly. All right, they have an API section here and you can get, you know, 16 day daily forecast, blah, blah, blah. This is basically what we're going to be doing. And if we go to the API doc, uh, we're just going to be using some of their sample data. All right. So for instance, uh, like the, uh, I think it's trying to find it here. 
Well, it's one of these, but you, you can uh, experiment with these if you wish. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a, a method called daily forecast. All right, and then we're going to return this, our instance of the HTTP client. We're going to get, and then inside of here will be a the URL from that, that sample that I just showed you. And then we're going to take it and we're going to map result to result. All right, so I'm going to refer back to that written tutorial to get that specific endpoint. And so it's right here, actually. This is going to be the data that is returned. And it is just sample data. It's not real time. Um, you would actually have to sign up for a free account to get an actual API key, and then you can get the live stuff. But this is just for samples. All right, so I'm just putting in anything here. This It's going to return the same exact response no matter what city and whatever. All right, so that's that. That's all we need to do there. Uh, in the next part, sorry, I'm going to go back here. Next, after we have that service file created, and by the way, you would record, you'd create actual multiple methods depending, you know, if you want to allow, to allow people to access, you know, different types of forecasts and different endpoints essentially. All right, so now in order to use this, we have to import it. So control B, get our sidebar. We have to go to our app module file. This is very standard stuff when you're working with uh, service files. We're going to import weather service from, and this will be forward slash weather dot service. Then we take that and add it as a provider. And we're also going to have to import the HTTP client module. So just to save myself a little bit of time, we'll copy or paste that, and then also add this as an import. Great. Also make sure this is all saved. All right, so next we're gonna go to our app component file and import, well, I should make life a little bit easier on myself and go back to app module, we'll copy that. There we go. And then we just add it up here as well. And then through dependency injection down here, we'll create an instance of it like we did with the HTTP client. So it's gonna be constructor. We pass in private weather, weather service. Now we can access that weather service with that method that we created. So ng on init. Oh, and by the way, we also want to import our chart from chart.js as well. We're going to be using it here. All right, so now let's just test to see if we're actually going to get that response data back from that service file. So we're going to say this dot weather, and then as you can see, it's telling us the only method available here is right there. And then we subscribe to it. Here's the response and we'll simply console log the response. Let's just save that, and we'll go back to our project, hit Control-Shift-I on Chrome, and here's our object with all of our information. They're only showing like three different days of information, but we could see each one contains within this list array, we have uh, main, which actually provides us with the uh, you know, the, the temperature max and the temperature minimum um, and all that good stuff. And so we can plot that out on the chart through chart.js. All right, so let's come back. And the next step is to actually structure this data, this response data. So what we want to do is we're gonna say, let temp max equals the response. And remember that property, which is an array called list. Let me just show you again. I want to make sure you're following along here. Right there, list. Let's open that up just so we can see a little bit of st uh, some stuff here. All right, so it's called list. Then we what we do with that is we map. We take the response and we'll say response dot main. And remember, the main is in reference to right here. So we're opening up main and we want to access temp max and ten, temp min. All right, so main dot temp 
and yeah, max. Now we're gonna take this, control shift alt, or yeah, shift alt rather in the down arrow key. And I'm gonna take it, um, just create two more duplicates of it. So this is gonna be temp min. So the map operator allows us to get the specific properties or arrays inside of uh, the, the actual arrays right here. And then also we're going to say we want the dates as well associated. So the dates are located in a property called DT within main. So uh, we have main here. Or actually, it's within, let's see here. Yeah, there it is right there, DT for date time, I would assume. It's a Unix timestamp. All right, so right here we'll put all dates and then DT. Next, we want to structure these so that they're readable. You know, we don't want to sit there looking at uh, actual uh, the, the timestamps. So we're going to traverse over this all dates right here. And we're going to use something. Uh, we're going to create a new date out of it so that's readable. So we'll put in let weather dates. This is a new variable. And we'll say all dates dot for each response. And inside of here, we'll say let js date equals new date. And this is where we pass in the response, which is this, the same thing as the each Unix timestamp. And then we, because we're working in JavaScript, we have to multiply it by 1000 milliseconds. Then we'll say whether dates dot push. So we're pushing in the new date result uh, instead of just the plain JavaScript or the timestamp rather. So we'll say JS date dot to locale time string and we'll put in English here. We're going to just put in options here to structure. So we're going to say we want the year as numeric and we also want the month as short. Then also the day as numeric. All right. So that should be pretty good at this point. So uh, if we go ahead and console log, for instance, uh, the weather dates, we should have a, you know, the actual formats that are friendly and easy to read right there. Awesome. Okay, so now, now that we have all the, the structuring part done and set up, we can now use, uh, we can act, now actually begin to integrate the chart js code so remember we're storing our chart js in uh, code inside of a property we'll call this chart any and real actually we're not going to make it we'll just make it an array sorry i'm having a brain fart there we go chart and let's get rid of this so we're going to say this dot chart we're going to create a new chart and that's from where we imported above in the imports from chart.js canvas. All right. So in here is where all of our chart.js options go. You could find this at the chart.js website. And I, if we go back here real quickly, if you go to uh, get started, they're going to take you to the documentation. It shows you, yeah, this is what right here is what we're about to define all of this stuff. And so they have tons of different types of charts, of course. Um, if we go to chart JS, let's see here, go back. It'll show you in the samples. These are all the different types of charts that you can create. So we're just going to be creating a basic line chart and it shows you how it works. And if you want to look at this sample specifically, you can right click in um, view page source right down here. So you could do that with all of them if you need obviously to create different types of charts. All right, so the type of the chart is going to be a line and then we have our data. This is where we're going to utilize our max or temp max, temp, temp min and weather dates 
variables. So inside of data, we have a labels property. The labels is where we're gonna have weather dates. All right, so that will show up at the bottom of the, uh, the chart on the X axis. All right, so after that, we're gonna have our data sets. All right, so in here, we're going to, our first data set is going to contain the data of temp max. It's also gonna have a border color, and this will just be 3CBA9F. By the way, all this code is available at this, uh, the written tutorial. And then also fill is going to be false. So they have a lot of different properties that you can experiment with um, and customize the looks of. So I'm just gonna take this object right here, copy it and then paste it. And this is gonna be temp min. Border color will be FFCC00. All right, and then fill false. Okay, so now after this closing bracket, after data, we can also specify our options. There's a lot of different options and I'm not going to cover them all, but I'm just gonna show you a few here. Legend will say display false. We don't want a legend there. Um, we'll also have scales. All right, so we're gonna say on the X axis, we'll have a array, an object. We'll say display true. All right. And then also we're going to have our Y axis. This will be the same thing, display true. And I think that's all I'm going to put. And that should be good for now. There's no red lines. I thought I just saw one. Yeah, there's no red squiggly lines anywhere. If there is, you probably just screwed up one of these menus, um, you know, the brackets or the, the squiggly brackets. So that looks good to me. Um, now let's go ahead and save that. In order for this to work, we have to just make a very slight update to our app component. We're gonna get rid of everything and we're just going to put in, I'm just gonna paste this here. So we're gonna say, we're gonna have a div of ng if chart. So if the chart property is ready to go, then we'll so show the canvas with an ID of chart. And by the way, that's what this is in relation to, this canvas right here. So this ID has to, this name right here has to match the ID value of this right here, of canvas. And then we just use interpolation to show the, the chart data. All right, so let's save it with any luck. There we go. So that is it. So as you can see, it's a really nice structure very well. There's tons of options that I really obviously haven't touched on yet. Um, but of course, you know, you have all this, um, the documentation here, which will really show you, you know, the full capabilities um, of what this thing can do in terms of this chart software. So yeah. Hopefully you're able to use this to create something cool. And uh, yeah, if you have any issues, obviously go ahead and ask here in the YouTube chat. All right, I'll talk to you guys real soon. Of course, as always, make sure to subscribe here on the YouTube channel and make sure the notifications are turned on. That's important because you won't get really notified right away. Uh, and also check out the site, Corsetro.com. See you later.